In our classes, I like to cover areas of particular concern that you may have, and from the classes that I've had around the country, one question that seems to always come out is ratio and proportion. Now, we just talked about ratio, and we stated that ratio has to be in like terms. Feet to feet, volts to volts, pounds to pounds, or whatever the case might be, it has to be in like terms. Now, what we can do through algebra is that we can compare one ratio to another. And in a situation like that, I have to know what the proportion is, whether it's directly proportional or inversely proportional. Now, you'll see when we get into transformers, we'll talk about a situation where our turns to our voltage are directly proportional. Or our turns and our voltage to our current are inversely proportional and that sort of thing. Uh, ratio and proportion is a good, uh, say, tool for calculating ratios that are similar. Uh, we're going to be working on circuits in a little bit. You'll even see where a voltage drop is directly proportional in a series circuit to, uh, to uh, the value of the resistance. So that if I know two resistors and the voltage drop across one of them, I can calculate the other one. Just because I know they're directly proportional. Okay. Let me show you how to set up a ratio and proportion problem. Let's say that I know the number of turns of the primary to the number of turns of the secondary. And that... Uh, I know the ratio of the voltage of the primary to the voltage of the secondary. If I had a situation like this, I would know that both ratios are equal and that uh, they're going to be directly proportional to one another. Now the way I write up my ratio and proportion problem is to put my primary on the same side of both ratios and my secondary on the same side of both ratios. Now, they could still be directly proportional if I put the secondary on top and the primary on the bottom of both of them. That would be no problem. If I was to show you what an inverse relationship would look like, now you'll see where voltage is inversely proportional to current. If I know, for example, that I have a certain voltage ratio on my transformer, I know that my number of turns, if I increase my number of turns, I'll increase my voltage on the secondary. But on the other hand, if I increase my voltage, I'll lower my current. Now, that's an inverse relationship. The way that ratio in proportion would be written up would be like this. Now, if I know the voltage of my primary to the voltage of the secondary, the current then of the secondary would be to the primary. In other words, my primary is on opposite sides of either ratio. Now if I know, if I know it's inverse, I have to make sure that the variables are on opposite sides like this. Now I, I could, I could flip-flop both of them, they'd still be inverse, I could transpose the two ratios it would still be inverse as long as my primary was on the opposite side of either ratio. Now that would be inverse. Directly proportional, they're on the same side. Now, to work a problem like this out, I would have to know three of the variables and then I could find the fourth. Now let's just take this one for an example. And let's say I'll pick out some numbers that are a little easier to work with. Let's say that uh, my number of turns of my primary is uh, is a thousand. I've got a thousand turns in my primary and I've got 100 turns on the secondary. Now let's say that my voltage now on the high side is 1,000 volts 
and I want to find the voltage on the low side. Now, I've, this is going to be particularly easy. We know we have to end up with 100. If I've got 1,000 on both sides, then this has to be 100. But the way we would work this out would be to cross multiply. If I cross multiply, now we're not breaking any of the rules that we've learned from our algebra. In other words, this, this treating both sides the same. It's just that when we cross multiply, we're cutting down a lot of time in solving our equation. Now what I want to do is cross multiply. That means I'll have 1,000 times e sub s. I'll have 1,000 e sub s is equal to 100 times times 1,000. So I'm going to have 100,000. Now I've got 1,000 e sub s. I want I want to have just one e sub s. So I would divide 1,000 on both sides. I do that then e then sub s would be equal to 100. Now in this case we're talking volts. Okay, that's a typical ratio and proportion problem. Now had I written my equation up to show inverse I would have I would have had an inverse relationship I, I uh, you you would still cross multiply you'd still work it out all the same you just you just want to make make sure that when you set your equation up that you have it set up inverse